Humanity's most remote ambassador to deep space never ceases to shock us. Over 40 years ago, on August 20th, 1977, two remarkable spacecraft departed from this planet on an unimaginable voyage. For the first time, the Voyager spacecraft were able to provide a close-up view of the planets in the outer solar system. It was like asking a fly to report back from New York City and sending it. The spacecraft delivered, and are still delivering. The Voyager spacecraft have just shocked scientists once more after all these years. How did that come about? What in deep space could have shocked scientists? Let's find out. From the furthest reaches of space, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are still moving and gathering important scientific data. The Voyager program was launched as a result of the uncommon planetary alignment that occurred in the late 1970s between Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, which would have permitted two spacecraft to travel to all four planets. On August 20th, 1977, Voyager 2 and Voyager 1 were launched into space. But for a lengthy mission, 12 years was actually the worst-case scenario. The primary mission of the Voyager spacecraft was intended to last just four to five years. Since the Voyager spacecraft provided the first up-close views of Jupiter and Saturn's moons, no one could have anticipated that both of them would still be doing science over 45 years later. Until the Voyager mission, the Earth's moon, a dead, airless, natural satellite with a heavily cratered and old surface, was the only example of a moon that scientists could use to describe a moon in our solar system. Voyager 1 revealed that some of Jupiter's moons, including Callisto and to a lesser extent Ganymede, displayed the recognizable cratered and battered surface found on Earth's moon when it arrived in the Jovian system in 1979. Others, like Europa's cold-ridged surface, astounded scientists with how unique they are. After that, it was Io. This odd Jovian moon was the color of pizza and had a young crater-free surface, which researchers later discovered was being actively formed by ongoing volcanism. The realization that moons need not to be ancient and frozen began to alter our perception of them. The discoveries of Europa near Jupiter and Enceladus surrounding Saturn also taught scientists that moons can contain vast oceans of liquid water that might be habitable. The waters of these planets may contain life, which is where we might find it. Voyager 1 had visited Jupiter, Saturn, and particularly Saturn's moon Titan by the time it had finished its planetary research mission in 1980. Voyager 1 entered the long journey into the depths of deep space, signaling the start of the spacecraft's prolonged mission. Thereafter, Voyager 1 turned around before leaving the solar system and captured what would later become a very well-known family portrait of the planets it had left behind at a distance greater than 40 times that of Earth from the Sun. The family portrait is incredibly unique because of how it came out. It appears as though Earth was photographed in a sunbeam because of the dispersed light in the cameras. The late scientist and television personality Carl Sagan coined the phrase pale blue dot after seeing the picture in which Earth seemed like a small dot of dust in a beam of light. Imagine seeing that the entire life we know to exist on this little delicate planet is just a pale blue dot. That's quite impressive in the grand scheme of the universe. The renowned photograph was captured in 1990. The two spacecraft then set out on a brand new mission to investigate far-off regions of space. Voyager 1 breached the boundary separating our solar system from interstellar space in 2013. Interstellar literally means between stars. Interstellar space, according to scientists, begins where the sun's magnetic field and the constant outpouring of particles end. Voyager 2 reportedly made its first interstellar entry in 2018. At that moment, the spacecraft was farther than 17.7 billion kilometers from the Sun. The only spacecraft to date to explore interstellar space is the pair of Voyagers. The two explorers have investigated how the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles emitted by the Sun, interacts with the interstellar medium. They have also offered information on the heliosphere, 
a sort of shield that surrounds our solar system. The solar wind generates the heliosphere which is then sculpted and altered by interstellar circumstances. The heliopools is the true boundary of the solar system, marking the point at which the solar wind ceases and interstellar space begins. According to NASA, the Voyager probe has given scientists new knowledge about interstellar space. For instance, they found that cosmic ray intensity beyond the heliopools is roughly three times greater than deep within the heliosphere. To obtain a more full understanding of our solar system and the interactions between the heliosphere and interstellar space, scientists have merged observations from Voyager with information from more recent missions. The work of the Voyagers has uncovered important facts about the Sun and its effects on the rest of the solar system. A plutonium-based thermoelectric power system powers each Voyager. The Voyagers lose electricity and their heat output decreases as the plutonium disintegrates. In order to make up for this, NASA stated that the team turned off all previously regarded as unnecessary systems. These include heaters that guard against the bitter cold of space for the still-running equipment. However, according to the Space Agency, all five of the sensors still function even after their heaters have been off since 2019. The Voyager's continued operation in much lower temperatures continues to baffle NASA experts. However, Voyager continues to make history as the farthest reaching piece of human creation ever made, bringing about surprises. A humming sound, initially thought to be from aliens, but actually associated with waves observed in minute amounts of gas found in the nearly empty interstellar space, was first described by scientists two years ago. Then, NASA scientists reported that the Voyager 1 spacecraft's attitude control system was sending back erroneous data in May of last year. Engineers searched through decades-old instructions in search of a remedy. The early 1970s design and construction of Voyager 1 made it more difficult to diagnose the spacecraft's issues. Although contemporary, Voyager engineers have some documentation from those early mission days. Some crucial records may have been missing or lost. Command media is the technical term for the paperwork holding the information on the spacecraft's design and procedures. It took a lot of time for mission engineers to explicitly search for boxes beneath the names of engineers who assisted in designing the attitude control system for Voyager 1's most recent telemetry error. Voyager 1's position in space is shown by its attitude control system, which also allows it to maintain its high-gain antenna pointed toward Earth and transmit telemetry data to NASA. Telemetry data essentially provides a status on the system's health. However, during the problem last summer, the telemetry readouts the spacecraft's handlers were receiving from the system were jumbled, making it impossible for them to determine whether the attitude control system was operating correctly. Additionally, engineers hypothesized that Voyager's problems might be related to its position in interstellar space. Data from the spacecraft indicates the presence of high-energy charged particles in interstellar space. Scientists say it's improbable that one would strike the spaceship, but if it does, the electronics may sustain greater harm. Although we are unable to identify it as the cause of the anomaly, it may play a role. Later in August, Voyager engineers discovered the cause of the jumbled data, a dead computer in the spacecraft's attitude control system. They think a bad command from another onboard computer set things off. Engineers have been turning off non-technical functions on board the Voyager probes, such as its science instrument heaters, as part of a continuous power management effort that has intensified in recent years, in an effort to keep them operational into 2030. The Voyager mission has advanced our understanding of the universe by revealing previously undiscovered moons, rings and heliopause. It's really remarkable that both spacecraft are still operating and operating well. Little glitches, but operating extremely well and sending back this valuable data, Dodd said, adding, they're still talking to us. Contributions from Voyager 1 are ongoing and their eventual significance may be unpredictable. 
Even though the probe has long since stopped taking pictures, it continues to collect data from the frigid depths of interstellar space as it races past Earth at a speed of 38,000 miles per hour. At more than 15.5 billion miles away, the probe is humanity's most distant emissary to the cosmos. Messages from it now take 22 hours to reach us. The famed golden records from the Voyager expedition are what people find fascinating, much more so than these sights of the distant frozen planets. For more than a year, a committee headed by the inspirational astronomer Carl Sagan put together the components that would portray Earth. The mixtape for the universe's music gets the most attention, but it's not the only highlight. The napping sound made when stone tools are made is one of the sounds of Earth. With use dating back around 3 million years and continuing today, this is the most resilient technology that humans and their ancestors have created. For the majority of human history, every community experienced the daily sound of stone striking stone to release a sharp-edged cutting flake. The sound of heartbeats and the thuds of stone can both be heard on the recording. A black scientist in a lab coat leans over a microscope in one of the 116 pictures, teared earrings gracefully dangling from her ears. The earrings sparked discussion about whether future alien viewers would understand the term jewellery. This photograph and image 17, which shows a photomicrograph of cells dividing, were intended to demonstrate to viewers that the science of microscopy was well known on Earth. These messages were recorded in 55 different languages. Some of them date back thousands of years, including Akkadian and Hittiti, which were not spoken on Earth at the time. Greetings, peace and friend are the three most often used words. The Portuguese greeting spoken by Janet Sternberg says simply, peace and happiness to all. Moving on, the voyagers will have to journey through the Oort cloud a large dark sphere of frozen objects surrounding the solar system for another 20,000 years before they can truly depart. Nothing will stop the Voyager spacecraft from continuing for tens of thousands of years, but not as working spacecraft. Voyager 2 systems are gradually being turned off in order to preserve the power as long as feasible. However, they will be all gone by the 2030s. Voyager 2 won't be fully dead even after it stops broadcasting. The Golden Record's little patch of uranium-238 coating has a half-life of 4.5 billion years compared to the 87.7 years of the plutonium-238 in its nuclear power source. Both substances are gradually transforming into lead. On a cosmic timescale, the radioactive conversion of the elements is a form of reverse alchemy. Until there is nothing left on Voyager 2 to transform, this process won't stop. Due to the fact that Voyager 2 is traversing various areas of interstellar space, its surfaces will likely deteriorate over time at a faster rate than those of Voyager 1. However, after 5 billion years, its golden record should still be largely readable. Even in 100 years, the Earth depicted in the golden records will likely be unrecognizable. The spacecraft and its data will endure for an unfathomable amount of time as a patchy archaeological record. The placement of the Voyagers is where their main cultural value rests, despite how endlessly intriguing the golden records are. The spacecraft serve as markers for the physical limits of human interaction with the cosmos. It will be as though a sense is lost when the Voyagers stop transmitting, there is no replacement for actually being there. These telescopes can only show us so much. So, who is willing to follow in their path? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.